Welcome back to Cure the Common Game. Today, in deck number 772, we're going to talk about Karaziker, the Eye Tyrant. 70% sure I pronounced that correctly. Three black and a red for a 5-5 five, five Beholder. This is not a bad rate. When you attack a player, tap target creature that player controls and goad it. Then whenever an opponent attacks another one of your opponents, you and the attacking player each draw a card and lose a life. So this is encouraging other people to attack, not you. They need to attack, and they need to not attack us. So there are several different ways. The goad, the goad mechanic in there was the first place I went. Uh, you know, t t we got this Geode Ranger that is pretty good. Landfall, go to creature. That's not bad. Uh, to besmirch is not bad. Not only do you get to borrow it, but you goad it. Uh, they reprinted us uh, Disrupt Decorum, which is, that is awesome. For a round of the table, you cannot be attacked. That is sweet. Dinner and politics don't mix. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Goblin Racketeer, uh, of course, when it attacks, you can goad something. Um, Frontier Warmonger, whenever one or more creatures attack one of your opponents or Planeswalker, uh, those creatures gain menace, so they get an advantage when they don't attack you. Maybe that will help incentivize not attacking us. Uh, the Vengeful Ancestor. Enters or attacks, so that's kind of a titan-ish ability there. And then, whenever a goaded creature attacks, it deals one damage to its controller. That's pretty neat. We have the cunning rhetoric. Whenever an opponent attacks you and or one or more planeswalkers you control, exile the top card of that player's library. You may play it. This is a uh, enchantment that says, "Don't hit me," much like. The uh, Hissing Miasma, Revenge of the Raven, and Marchessa's Decree. Marchessa's Decree. I kind of like that monarch anyway in, in Commander. It's pretty sweet. But Agitator Ant. At the beginning of your end step, yeah, it gets counters. You get to go to each creature that had counters put on it. That's awesome. Carter Doom Scourge. Creatures your opponents control attack each combat a player other than you. So it doesn't use the word goad because they didn't use that in uh, call time. But let's face it, it's essentially goaded. Now, other things that encourage people to, uh, you know, the vows. Of course, we only have two here since we're in, well, I guess there was the third. Anyway. Uh, the Vow of Torment and the Vow of Lightning. Only had one impetus left, you know, it because it, it actually goes. But then, like Curse of Disturbance, that's another... That's not Don't Attack Me, that's Please Attack This Player. <laughs> so, um, it, it, if somebody pulls out too strong, it, probably... Uh, Ride of the Raging Storm, I like this because this elemental creature can't attack you, so that's pretty neat. Uh, so let's look at some ramp, shall we? We have, because our commander is five mana, That that's not a bunch, but it's not nothing either, right? So we have Dark Ritual, Dark Steel Ingot, Wayfarer's Bauble, Bloodstone Cameo, Ornithopter of Paradise, the Rakdos Key Rune, Signet, Cluestone, Locket, and Talisman of Indulgence. Of course, we got the Soul Ring. And lastly, I have the Netherborn Altar, or Netherborn Altar, I should say. This does not produce mana, but it kind of does. Um, you tap it to put a soul counter on it. Put your commander into your hand from the command zone. Then you lose three life for each soul counter on it. Now, this would be amazing with things can't get counters. That would be sweet. Uh, no, 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 because that's part of the cost. No. Boy, they were smart about that, weren't they? 
anyway, uh, it does let us continue to cast our commander for face value. Granted, we're going to lose some life. Um, you know, five is not bad. Seven's not bad. Once you start getting up to the nine, eleven range, if it gets that bad, uh, this may come in handy. I don't know if this is a. Uh, I think this is the first deck I've tried the altar in, so we'll see how it goes. Of course, I got a diabolic tutor and uh, the dance macabre just to get things back, you know. Uh, we have the usual fare here, uh, Knight's Whisper, Tormenting Voice, Sign and Blood, Light Up the Stage. I like Keen Duelist. Um, you and target opponent each reveal the top card of your library. You each lose life, and then you get the card. So so this is, uh, um, what is that? A Dual Bob which you can you can uh, uh, either make friends or enemies with this. Uh, so much at low enough light, you could conceivably eliminate them with this card or, you know, earn some goodwill. However, Tectonic Reformation, I'm not exactly certain. Here again, trying it out. I like the fact that every land in your hand has Cycling Red. Um... And it itself has cycling, so if you draw it late game or whatever, if you don't have, you know, you can cycle it away. Um, I like the fact that it turns 38% of the deck. Well, not really 38% because you've already got lands to play. Anyway, a significant chunk of the deck into, you know, cards that will replace themselves if you don't need them. But let's look at Fatal Lore. I love this card. Um... I have it with card draw, because most of the time, that's exactly what you're going to do. Now, all of these cards that allow your opponents to make choices, a, a, a lot of folks don't like. But Fatal Lore is one of those where your opponent doesn't want either one of these things to happen. So whatever you get, either you're going to draw three, or you're going to pop two creatures. And then they draw three. Um... More than likely, what you are going to have happen is, you know, they don't want their creatures <laughs> to die. At least that's been my experience. Uh, we got a round of just regular creatures because they're pretty decent. You know, the Lightning Reaver, you know, can deal damage all around. Clay Golem, Vampire Nighthawk's a pretty decent card. As is the White of Precinct 6, Tarian Mauler. Archetype of Finality is also another. It doesn't explicitly say don't attack me on it, but it kind of does. And the, then Kazul Tyrant of Cliffs. Here's another card that disincentivizes them attacking you. Uh, yeah. Unless they pay three. That's. I mean, people don't pay two, but for a 3 3 Ogre. Now let's look at our removal, which is primarily black. We have Capital Punishment. I like it. It's removal of some kind. Either it's creature removal or hand removal. It's something. Uh, profane Command. Cry of the Carnarium. Shriek Maw. Ritual of Soot. Tragic Slip. Rakdos Charm. Feed the Swarm. I mean, it's got to be in there, right? Power Word Kill. Crux of Fate. Oh, here's the other Vow. Vow of Malice. Uh, Murder. Doom Blade. Terminate. Shattering Pulse. And we have a Void over on Register 3 with a hair in the dang sleeve. Anyway. Um... We have Command Tower, Terramorphic Expanse, Rogue's Passage. I put the Throne of the High City in there just because we were already doing some Monarch shenanigans. And, you know, it's a colorless land. It, it's, it's a two-color deck, so, so that's not terrible. Uh, Bloodfell Caves, Rakdos Carnum, Urborg Volcano, 
Vivid Marsh, Foreboding Ruins, Rakdos Guildgate, Evolving Wilds, Vivid Crag, Dragon Skull Summit, Sulphurous Mire, Cinder Barrens, and lastly, Alchem Refuge. So that is it for Kaz, Kaz, uh, Big K. That's, yeah, that's what I'll call it. I did really good at the very beginning <laughs> pronouncing that name. Uh, but that is got our Ogre and Monarch tokens there. And let's go put it on the wall. The wall's getting full, isn't it? 772, there. It'll probably get played tonight, if it hasn't already got played. Uh, I, I think that one actually was played last week. Uh, because, as I remember, when I listed it, I had to... Uh, it was all, all, all shuffled. So, that is what we've got for today. I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. But we're going to go ahead and shuffle and cut.